All right, welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast, Week 14 edition, first round of the Fantasy Football Playoffs for most of you. My name's Joe Bond, with me as usual, Dave Eddy. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Joe? It's It's been like a month, it feels like. <laughs> yeah, man, it's... Uh, Feels a little feels a little weird. Like we had, we did, had to take last week off because I was sick, dealing with sick kids, and uh, been it's been a rough couple of weeks around here. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm ready to get back to talking some football. It was uh, quite the day, that is for sure. We are watching currently the Seahawks and the Rams on Sunday night. They're about to kick off the second half here with the Rams leading. 21 to 3 a uh, bit of a surprise man i kind of thought you know this would be a closer game we'll have to see if russell wilson and company can work their magic in the second half which is what they do a lot of um but yeah it's it's uh robert woods finally got his first touchdown of the year i guess that's a a good thing <laughs> robert robert woods and mike williams yeah earlier yeah. today mike I williams know, finally right? got in i know yeah um all right, man, let's get into this action here for the Sunday game. So start with the Redskins-Packers. Redskins lose 15-20. to 20. I thought this was going to be a bigger blowout than it was, man. It looked like it was going to be early, and then the Packers offense is kind of sputtered, not really sure what happened. Um, on the Redskins side of the ball, uh, the the news really coming out of the Redskins side is Darius Geis injured his knee. Not really sure how severe it is, but, man, just – just another injury for this guy, man. You got to feel for him, but um, Peterson took advantage. You know, twenty for seventy six and a touch. Haskins is garbage as usual, but McLaurin finally, you know, did catch a pretty amazing touchdown. Actually, um, the Packers side, Rodgers was just kind of meh again. This was the Aaron Jones show, man. He dominated this this game. Um, One thirty four on the ground and a touch. Another fifty eight through the air. Um, I mean. We've been saying it all year, but like it's starting to it it is a legit trend at this point. You know, it's fourteen games. You know, fourteen weeks into the season, thirteen games for each team now. I mean, when the other team really just can't score, Rogers isn't going to do anything. They're just going to ground a pound. I mean, it is this you know is this to the point where he's just playing to the competition and like he's just you know this is what it's going to be like. This is it, right? It kind of it kind of feels like like just a shrewd veteran move to some extent, because I mean they're still winning games, you know, real life wise, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he's just been fairly efficient, you know. I mean, I think I saw he's like got the third best ratio right now all time for touchdown to interceptions, um, and it just kind of seems like he's doing just enough to get by, and and maybe he plans on you know, turning it up as necessary, let's say come playoff time, um, which doesn't really do any fantasy owners any good, but no. that I guess would make the most sense. I guess you kind of got to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we, he's had a couple like pretty monster games, but it seems to be against, you know, offenses that, you know, are keeping up with them. You know, when, when they don't need to score a lot, he's not really, he's not pressing. He's not trying to do too much. And so, yeah, I, I'm with you there. Uh, Panthers, Falcons, Panthers lose 20 to 40. Um, yeah, McCaffrey, another, I mean, you're, you're loving in PPR leagues, 11 catches, 82, 82 yards, only 53 on the ground. You know, not the, not the typical McCaffrey game. I'd say overall though, um, on the Falcon side, Matt Ryan three hundred yards and two touchdowns. Freeman got in the end zone. Ridley got in the end zone. Julio looked okay. He came out of this game unscathed, which is probably the most important thing. Um, you know the the takeaway I I got from this game and you know numbers aside, at the end because I think he got a bunch of garbage points. But Kyle Allen is pretty terrible, dude. I mean, and there's yeah. rumors now that. The Panthers are looking to trade Cam Newton in the offseason. Yikes. I mean, is that really going to happen? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it, it very well could just be, you know, stuff going on that we maybe don't know about. I, I would have to imagine that under different circumstances that, that Cam probably could have been back and playing by now. But obviously, 
you know, Allen was playing pretty good for a while, so there's, you know, no need to rush him back. Um, I don't even know what would happen if he would have, like, legitimately been just 100% healthy, but I don't know. I mean, if the news is coming out now that, you know, a, a trade is a possibility, that alone had to come from somebody. So whether that's legitimately from the Panthers' end or whether it's from Cam's end, um, either way, I mean, it'll be interesting to see because I don't see Kyle Allen really being a, you know, uh, an option for for fantasy at this point um, until he starts to really show something. No, I mean the only league I'm using him in is is Scott Fishball, where it's a super flex league, and you pretty much got to start two quarterbacks. So there you go. Um, Ravens Bills Ravens win twenty four to seventeen. This game wasn't really like a. I don't know. It wasn't as exciting as I kind of hoped it would be. It was very, you know, I, there ended up being a good number of points, you know, 24-17. But, like, it just was still kind of a very defensive um, very defensive game. Um, I don't know if that even makes any sense, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, you know, Lamar got three touchdowns, but, you know, didn't light it up really overall. Uh, Ingram didn't do a ton. Uh, Mark Andrews got hurt. Uh, that's that's going to be – um, big news to follow there or this this week to see how severe that is. I haven't looked up the the notes on those either. On the Bills side here, you know Josh Allen one forty six and a touch. Um, Singletary looked good, which was you know good to see against a pretty solid defense. Uh, Beasley got in the end zone. John Brown eight targets, but only caught three of them. I mean it was just kind of an ugly game overall, like on both sides offensively. Um, you know the note here. I mean. Lamar is the MVP of the league at this point. You got to say, right? Um, you know, Russell Wilson's kind of neck and neck with him. It feels like, but this, this has got to be Lamar's. We talked about this. Me and AJ did on the uh, Phase Six Pack Hour on on Thursday. Um, yeah, you know, he's also the fantasy football MVP clearly at this point. But I mean, is there anybody else on the Ravens besides a healthy Mark Andrews that you're like really trusting week in and week out? No, I mean, Mark Andrews would have been about it. Um, I mean, I think this is a team that, you know, given given their preference, would prefer probably a game closer than or closer today than than what's usual, you know, more of a just kind of defensive game, kind of just pound the ball, play for, you know, possessions and whatnot, as opposed to, you know, where they have to score all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not good for fantasy. Um, I mean, I guess it's good if you own Lamar, but um, anybody else, I mean, you know, Marquise Brown at the beginning of the year kind of seemed like he could be something, and then it's just kind of turned into Mark Andrews, and then you hope if you own, you know, um, Ingram that he gets in the end zone. Otherwise, he's not really, you know, going to be doing you a lot of good. He'll His floor, I guess, isn't too bad, but his ceiling is, isn't high at all. Yeah, in- Ingram is very uh, game script dependent at this point, it feels like, but, uh, you know, Lamar takes a lot of his – a lot of his rushing stats away too, so it's a bit it's a big blow to him. Moving on, Bengals, Browns, Bengals lose nineteen to twenty seven. Um this wasn't a pretty game on either side either, really. Um you know, the uh you know, Dalton was Dalton. <laughs> Not much there. Uh Mixon looked amazing. Uh, 146 in a touch. Um, you know, Boyd was okay overall. Baker was miserable, dude. 11 for 24, 192 and two picks. Uh, Chubb got it going, 106 yards. Uh, Landry and OBJ, not really anything to write home about, you know, thanks to Baker. Uh, but, yeah, the, the news is Joe Mixon, man. You know, we we were we were ready to throw Joe Mixon to the curb for a, a while there. And he's I think really, we did. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't start him for a couple weeks in a row. And then uh, – you know, they, they made the change at quarterback, and all of a sudden they realized, oh, wait a minute, we have Joe Mixon back there. Let's give him the ball a bunch. Oh, what do you, what do you know? We actually, like, have a good running back. Let's let's use him. Um, you know, I say his his stock this season is at, was at least, at, like, an all-time low. What are we thinking about him next year? Like, if he kind of continues at this pace of, of, you know, nearing 100 yards from scrimmage every game and maybe a touchdown every other game or, or so like that, what are we thinking his stock going into next season is going to be? Well, I think that, you know, when you look ahead to 2020, I, I think you've got to expect that they're going to draft Joe Burrow. And so it's going to be the Joe and Joe show. 
and they're probably <laughs> going to Jojo you know Jones. lean on him <laughs> quite a bit to you know run the ball, control possession, uh, you know take a little bit of heat off of him. Um, so if anything, I I think that you know you assume that that's who they're going to take, and you would assume that that's going to only increase his value. I wouldn't go crazy, but um, if you want to value him as a top ten running back, I think that's extremely justified. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, for a while there, you know, he was he was dropping down outside of the top twenty of a lot of people's rankings, you know, because they just were not using him. Yeah, it was no weird. easily. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it it it'll it will be a topic of discussion for sure in the off season. Next game up, Lions Vikings. Lions lose twenty to seven. Um, it was it was pretty ugly, man. I'm sure you know. Um, David Blau did not have the magic that he had on Thanksgiving Day. Working for him today, I uh, got a late touchdown to kind of salvage it, and that went to Galladay, thankfully. Um, Scarborough, sixty five yards. Joan, Marvin Jones, not much. The Vikings side, I mean. Didn't have to do a whole lot, honestly. Cousins, 242 and a touch. Cook with 62 and a touchdown. Um, you know, Madison got got a lot of work, actually, which was kind of expected, especially with a lead like that, right? You know, Cook had that injury coming in, and you kind of figured they were going to mix in a lot more Madison. He got 14 touches today, too. Um, Diggs went 6 for 92. One huge play kind of boosted the, those uh, passing yards or receiving yards for him, but... Yeah, the the thing the thing I want to ask you is, you know, like I said, David Blau did not have the magic going today. Yeah, yeah, Galladay scored, but I mean, how worried are we with Galladay and Jones moving forward now with with him under center the rest of the way? I mean, I still think Galladay is an elite receiver. Um, I mean, they're going to be playing from behind. They, I mean, they've been doing a better job of running the ball, oddly enough, uh, with Scarborough back there but still not enough to really scare anyone. So they're going to have to throw the ball. You know, Hawkinson's out. Um, like I said, Galladay is, is an elite option still because it's going somewhere. And Jones has never really been the most consistent. Uh, he's been pretty no. good as of late. Uh, you know, up until this last game, um, last week, he's he's been more consistent than usual, just has been lacking that, you know, huge game that he – he gets I don't know, twice a year. He's had one. I don't see him getting another. But yeah, I mean, if, <laughs> if you've not. got Galladay, I, you'd be insane to sit him. If you've got Jones, I don't think it really changes a whole lot. You might even be better off with the situation they're in. Um, you know, being forced to throw the ball so much. I'd obviously rather have Stafford throwing him the ball, but um, of course. I mean, the kind of plays that that Jones and Galladay typically make, anyways, are you know just get the ball in the area and let them make a play. Yeah, I've got I've got one of each in a couple of different leagues, so I'm hoping that it continues for Galladay at least. Jones, I'm not as reliant on in the leagues I've got him, but Galladay for damn sure. Uh, game of the week, man, 49ers Saints. You know, both teams great records. Yeah, you know, going in, this was a defensive game, right? We were thinking 24 to 20 or something like that, right? Like at best. 48 to 46, the 49ers take this game. I mean, insane the amount of scoring that, that happened in this game. I mean, the score that I just said happened in the first quarter, by the way. Um, yeah, basically. <laughs> um, 49ers win with a walk-off kick. Um, just just a crazy – I mean, it could rattle off the entire box score. It's so – like, everybody did good, right? Um, Jimmy G, four touchdowns. Monster got one in – both the ground and the air. Sanders had one. He threw for a one. Kittle had a touchdown. Breeze had five. Thomas had a touchdown at 134 yards. The dude's a monster. Um, the guy that I didn't mention, by the way, is Alvin Kamara. What is going on with Alvin Kamara? I mean, 13 rushes, 25 yards, caught four for 18 didn't find the end zone again. He hasn't scored since week one. I mean, what is it getting to the point where we really have to like legit think about not starting Alvin Kamara? I mean, Latavius Murray is better than him at this point, at least for this I mean, season. I I can't see you. You'd have to have just a, an unfair roster, I think, to be able to consider benching him. You know, even even in like the matchup they had today. 
I think it's just more of a matter that, you know, especially this week, and I know, like you said, it's been a pretty consistent trend, but, I mean, obviously they're facing a, a crazy good, you know, run defense. And, you know, Michael Thomas is at a, on a record pace right now for, for catching the ball. So I think, you know, they've just kind of decided that that's where they're going this year. And then, you know, probably the worst thing that happened to Kamara is, um, you know, when he got hurt earlier in the season. I don't I don't know that he's fully healthy or not, but either way, it opened up a chance for Murray to, to really prove himself in that offense. Yeah. And so now that's kind of, you know, eaten into his share a little bit as well. Yeah, Um, because, you know, Murray filled in and, you know, played that role perfectly, played very well and played played well today, too. I mean, you want to say they went up against a tough run even tonight, and I don't disagree with you, but Murray went seven for 69. Um, So there you go. I mean, he had a really nice day. Um, uh, Dolphins and Jets, the game of field goals, 10 total field goals. Congrats, guys. I, that's my kind of game right there. You're a Lions fan. You feel right at home watching yeah. that. Um, yeah, this game was boring as all hell. Um, Fitzpatrick was kind of blah, not what we were hoping. A lot of people were kind of on his on his jock strap this week. Uh, didn't really pan out. You can blame maybe some of that on the fact that um, Parker – left in the second quarter with a concussion, didn't come back. Uh, I want to say another receiver there has got hurt too. Um, you know, Patrick Laird uh, at one point had, you know, he finished 15 for 48, but at one point he had six six rushes for nine yards. Yeah. And everybody on Twitter missed the joke. Not me, not me, buddy. You not know you. I got it. <laughs> One guy was like, "If you were starting Patrick Laird, then you have bigger problems." And I was like, "Not the point." But okay. Yeah, I you feel sorry it. for his wife. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, I just figured I had to get that one in. Uh, ex Hokey Isaiah Ford, six for ninety-two. Yeah, go, buddy. Um, on the Jets side, Darnold, you know, two touchdowns. Okay, day. Nothing, nothing to write home about. Um. Robbie Anderson was the receiver to own here, 7 116 to the touch. Probably nobody was starting him, really, to be honest. Um, the guy I want to ask you about is, is Bilal Powell, right? So, you know, Le'Veon Bell was out today. Um, Bilal Powell filled in 19 rushes, 74 yards, caught two for 14. I mean, overall solid day, nothing great. I mean, what do we think about Powell if Bell were to have to miss more time, which I don't think he's going to? But. No, I don't think he's going to miss any more time, but I mean, nothing nothing spectacular. I mean, DFS wise, you kind of had to play him because he was 3,500. Of course. But as far as, you know, the rest of the year, if Bell were to be out, he put up, you know, Bell light numbers, you know. Um, he didn't, you know, do it in the air. He only had two catches on three targets, but, right. you know, he had 74 yards and he didn't score a touchdown. That sounds like Le'Veon Bell to me. Exactly. Um, just missed miss, miss a couple of uh, catches. But, yeah, this game, I I would have, you know, if if I had to guess, I would have flipped the scores and, um, you know, the game script between this game and the San Francisco New Orleans game. Yeah, um, right. I, I thought this was going to be the, the shootout. And it me too. was absolutely not. Yeah, definitely. I, I was thinking the same thing. You know, the one thing I'll say about Bilal Powell is, they got the Ravens next, man. Uh, oh boy, that's not good. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's not going to be good. Not going to be good for Le'Veon Bell. No, it's not. Um, or Darno, or uh, Anderson, good, yeah. or anyone that wears green. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be a brutal game. Uh, Lamar Jackson is going to be a monster in that game. Uh, Colts Bucks next game. Bucks win thirty eight to thirty five. The big news is Mike Evans. Pulled up lame after he scored a 61-yard touchdown. So at least he got that out of him. Uh, but bad news overall there. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. Run through some of the stats here, though. Stick with the Bucks side. You know, Winston did Winston things. 456 yards, four touchdowns, three picks. Uh, but overall, phenomenal fantasy day, right? Like, <laughs> you just don't care at that point for the three picks because he got you so much elsewhere. Um the running game split right down the middle. Nothing 
crazy here. Uh, Godwin had a, a good game, seven for ninety-one with Mike Evans out, uh, and then Howard. You know, I wonder if this is what we're gonna, you know, see with Mike Evans coming out. Had a, a fairly solid showing here too. Uh, on the Colts side, Brissett two fifty-one and two touchdowns. Matt got in the end zone, but not a whole lot of yards. Um, Pascal had a good game again without T.Y. Um, big surprise here is Marcus Johnson. Never heard of him. Three for 105 and a touch. And I want to say there was somebody else, like really random name that scored for the Colts too that I never, ever heard of. Um, but anyway, Mike Evans, man, like I said, he's out. And there's already talk from Bruce Arians that he would be surprised if Mike Evans plays next week even, which is Bad. I mean, that was a prime matchup against Detroit too. So you were looking for big things. Hey, for hey, both hey! Him watch your mouth, and Joe. God, hey, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> uh, but I mean, what is this offense going to look like without without Mike Evans? I mean, are we going to expect another thirty eight point blow up and four hundred yards from Winston without you know one of the best receivers in the game? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I, I mean, Perriman stepped in um, and, and played well. Uh, OJ Howard, you know, at least caught the balls that were thrown to him. They weren't, you know, bouncing off his back into defenders this week. But um, I, I guess I don't expect a whole lot to change. I mean, Evans Evans barely played in this game. So this was almost an entirely Evansless game. And you got exactly the type of Winston in, in a nutshell that, you know, we always talk about, you know, f- I don't know 450 plus yards, four touchdowns. If you stop there, it'd be amazing. Right, but then you get all these you get all these crazy picks and um, oh, some you know, of them are just so here bad. and there and <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, I mean, his you know fantasy wise, his numbers are phenomenal. I mean, I, I would take 450 yards and four touchdowns if you're going to throw three interceptions. Like, I mean, okay, but I, I don't think this offense really changes a whole lot other than maybe like you said, Howard gets a little bit more involved, um, and then Perriman's going to play a little bigger role, but. I think the game script is going to remain the same. No one's going to be able to run on them. They're not going to be able to stop anyone. And so they're just going to be playing shootouts like this. Yeah. The the only thing I worry about is like, you know, of course it did happen early, but it still happened in the game. And so the defense is prepared for one thing, right? They're prepared for <clears throat> Evans and Godwin. And that's pretty much it, right? So then you switch and you're having to mix in OJ Howard, who they probably didn't game plan for. So you wonder if maybe some of that was, you know, because of that. And so now they can game plan for OJ Howard and Perryman and things like that. And, you know, now double bracket Godwin, because who else is going to catch the ball that you care about there, right? So it, you kind of worry that maybe teams are going to game plan differently. Now, no offense again, it is Detroit, so maybe they won't be able to do it. Uh, I don't know what the rest of the schedule looks like, but. You know, it is just something to think about. You know, it's kind of like that the backup quarterback, you know, syndrome, right? He comes in and likes the world on fire, and then the next game it's like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I think they'll be fine. I, obviously, it's going to probably boost Godwin to, to the next level and, you know, make him a top, what, I don't know, God, top three receiver. I mean, what, do you put him behind Thomas and Hopkins in that uh, offense? He kind of already was in a lot of, you know, a couple of weeks. He was ranked number three or four. Uh, coming in, it's just, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, he's not sharing those looks anymore. So yeah, that's I don't know. true. We'll, we'll see. Uh, next game up, we got Broncos Texans. Probably the biggest surprise score of the game, as far as like the final uh, and or the outcome. And Broncos were thirty eight, Texans twenty four. After the Texans just took it to the Patriots last week, they then turn around and lose to the Broncos. Exactly the way I predicted it. Um, no, uh, Drew Locke, man, three hundred nine and three touchdowns, looking good. Lindsey sixteen for eighty one and a touchdown. Noah Fant one hundred thirty yards and a touch, um, looking good there. I mean, Watson did not look good, man. Twenty eight for fifty, two ninety two and a touchdown through two picks. Um, you know, Hopkins got a, a couple big game big gains there so you know he got 120 in a touchdown off seven catches so great game from him but the story man drew lock i mean this guy's looked good in two games in a row that he's played you'll believe her man oh man it's it's tough it's still a little early um 
you know, he, he did do it against two pretty good defenses. So, I mean, at least pass wise, um, Chargers have been pretty good against uh, the pass. Houston, you know, like you said, balled out last week against the Patriots and, and then Locke made him look like a college team. So I don't know that this is what we're going to get from him necessarily, but um, it, it's a promising start. That's for damn sure. Yeah, I mean, this guy had a lot of a lot of hype coming out of college uh, after it wasn't this past year. It was actually the year before. Like he was supposed to be like the number one quarterback, and then he kind of had a bad senior year or whatever it was this last year, and he kind of fell down the the draft board. But you know, maybe he's the real deal. Maybe maybe oh, we finally got one. We'll have to yeah, see. Well, it, it's it is I mean, still early, but it's promising to see him succeed this early. Yeah, he's got a lot of uh, Jameis in him, so um, you know he could turn he could turn around and do this. You know, next week he goes for you know a buck fifty and in, in four picks against the Chiefs. So sure, um, absolutely, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, they got nothing to lose by playing him. He's playing well. He's gonna yep. you know sling the ball around, and um, I mean, if you if you own him fantasy wise, that's what you want him to do anyway. So um, yeah. yeah, his his stock is on the rise. Yeah, absolutely. Chargers drags the next game here. Chargers blow out the Jaguars, man, forty-five to ten. So maybe it wasn't uh, Nick Foles' problem. <laughs> maybe it's a whole team problem at this point. Oh, the Jags are looking terrible. Um, Chargers though, Rivers looked like sixteen completions for three hundred and fourteen yards and three touchdowns. That's crazy. Um, I mean, it's just. Chunk yards after chunk yards is all this game was about for the Chargers. And Eckler got it all. Eight for 101 on the ground, four for 112 on the air. Um, you know, Gordon was was solid, just not as good as Eckler today. 55 at a touch. Uh, Keenan Allen looked good. As you mentioned earlier, Mike Williams got his first touchdown. Finally, um, uh, on the Jag side, like Minshew just – 162 in a touch, nothing really going. Fournette, you know, did not get it going either. 15 for 50, only caught three passes. Uh, DJ Shark went back to doing DJ Shark things, though. You know, him and Minshew have that connection there. Nine for 75, 10 targets. So Minshew looks his way early and often. Um, you know, the, the thing here, though, is with the Chargers, right? You know, so after a few good weeks from Gordon – yeah, you know, this was Eckler, right? You know, this was the the Eckler week, as as I just mentioned, you know. But you know, this offense is it's been kind of struggling lately. It feels like, right? I mean, with Rivers kind of down, but this team has Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Hunter Henry, Eckler, Gordon. Like, what this offense is maddening, though, because like they're not performing at a high level like this every week. But this is what we should expect, right? So like, yeah, what do we I mean, make of it? for sure, right? Uh, this this is a team that lost to the Lions earlier in the season, and they have the capability to do exactly what they just did every week. It's just a matter of you know which one of these guys is going to go off because every single one of the guys we just named, all five of them, you know, with a Hall of Fame quarterback running that show, could and almost should do this every week, and they just don't. So, look at Mike Williams, first touchdown of the year. He had, what, 11 last year? 10. I he mean, had 10 yeah, off 10. 66 yeah. catches. He came yeah. into this game with 69 catches. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. and zero touchdowns. So, now he's got 71 and a touchdown. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, when Keenan Allen is on, he's a top five receiver in football. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, I don't know. It's so hard. It's almost like the Tampa Bay conundrum of, you know, they're all so good and they're all so valuable, but you can't, you know, everyone can't go off on the same game. It's just not possible. There's just way too many mouths to feed. So it's frustrating, but if you own any of them, I can't imagine you're in a position where you have the luxury to decide to sit or start them. You're probably starting them all with the exception of Rivers. You know, you might have an option there, but you're not sitting any of the other guys. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, Mike Williams isn't a isn't a must start in my opinion, but he's he's close. He's like right on that borderline, depending on your roster, obviously. Even yeah, even without the touchdowns, he's still been a heck of a lot better than than you think. He's still been consistent. He just unfortunately has been consistently out of the end zone. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's 
it has it's just been frustrating with him <laughs> for that reason. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, today had he caught two for sixty three <clears throat> and no touchdowns, you're going, Yeah. Cool, I got eight points from Mike Williams in a PPR league. Yeah. Whatever. All right, next game, Titans, Raiders, Titans forty two, Raiders twenty one. Tannehill looking good again. Three ninety one and three touchdowns. They're talking extension with this guy. Um Henry at 103 and two touchdowns, just mauling over to people. This dude is a beast. Uh, A.J. Brown, five for 153 and two touchdowns. Just baller, dude. Um, the Raiders, 263 and two touchdowns. DeAndre Washington filling in mostly for um, uh, an injured Josh Jacobs. Uh, did okay. 14 for 53 and a touchdown. Caught six for 43 in the air. Uh, they did use a little bit of uh, Jalen Richard as well, but uh, this was mainly DeAndre Washington. Uh, Waller was the receiver that you cared about, six, six for 73. The story line is, though, you know, Tannehill, I mean, is this guy, like, near and legit must-start territory almost? It's just been ridiculously good. I mean, <laughs> you would think that Tannehill and Rodgers, <clears throat> you know, would be having opposite seasons, like, Tannehill seems like the guy who would be, you know, your game manager doing just enough to get by, and Rodgers would be the guy putting up, you know, 403 touchdowns, but it's it's the other way around, and it's surprising because I, I don't know about you, but when I think of the Titans, I think of a defensive team that likes to pound the ball with Henry, and yet Tannehill is out here, you know, making the case to be, you know, a fantasy-relevant quarterback week after week after week after week, and he doesn't really have elite options to throw to. I mean, Delaney Walker's been out forever. Uh, A.J. Brown has good moments. Corey Davis has, has been a bust. And here he is, you know, putting up putting up these numbers. Yeah, I don't really know how he's doing it either, man, uh, but you'll take it. I unfortunately started him last year, last week in one league when he kind of had his dud game, but, uh, you know, so be it. Um but yeah, he's he's right there. You know, he's definitely streaming quarterback territory. That's for damn sure. Um, next game, uh, Chiefs versus Pats. Chiefs win this game twenty three to sixteen. Pats lose two in a row. Uh, pretty pretty big man. Um, so we got Mahomes two eighty three and a touchdown through a pick as well. Uh, there was no Daryl Williams, no Damian Williams. So this was McCoy. I thought Darwin Thompson was going to get more involved. I was dead wrong. Um, but McCoy didn't really do much, 11 for 39. Uh, Kelsey, 7 for 66. I mean, just not a whole lot offensively going on here f- from Kansas City. I mean, it could be because Mahomes might have been hurt. Like, I don't know. If you didn't watch the game, you won't probably know this, but... You know, like he took a hit early and landed on his hand kind of awkwardly, and he was holding it. It's his throwing hand, too. It seemed like his pinky finger or something was like off. And the ball just wasn't really coming out of his hand with as much zip as it usually does. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we hear something, uh, but I would definitely keep, keep an eye out for that, you know, some injury news coming from Mahomes. But he finished the game and they won, so. Maybe it's not that bad. I don't know. It's just weird to see a quarterback with an injured hand just kind of figuring it out. Um, on the Patriots side, uh, it's just more bad news, man. The, the the offense outside of Edelman is just not there. Even Brady is just not there. Um, I mean, it's, is it officially time to just say New England is not an elite fantasy football offense? I mean it. It's it's well it's well past time in my opinion. Um, yeah. I mean, geez, even if you just look at the last five games, they put up sixteen points, twenty two points, thirteen, seventeen, twenty. I mean, that's not the kind. That's not the New England Patriots we're used to. We're used to, you know, them kind of finding the weakness of the opponent and exploiting it. Whatever that was, they were good enough to do it. And now they're. Um, you know, best attribute is playing defense and then trying to, you know, keep up with Edelman and Brady. And it's it's not working out, man. It's they are no longer an elite defense or an elite offense by any stretch. And they have got to be at best middle of the pack. I mean, at best. Yeah. 
And they do get the Bengals next week, so it's a get-right game for the offense, hopefully. But then the Bills, that's going to be tough. And then finish off the season with the Dolphins, but, I mean, they're probably going to have things locked up and be benching people that last week, so it won't really much matter. And fantasy's not happening anyway, so we don't really care. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree with you. It's basically Edelman and Bust. You know, you kind of maybe mix it in some James White here and there, but, I mean, he's not super reliable either. Um Last game here, Steelers and Cardinals. We got Steelers 23, Cardinals 17. Duck Hodges 152 and a touchdown. Uh, he scrambled a little bit too. Uh, Snell 16 for 41. There was no um, no James Conner this game. Uh, Deontay Deontay Johnson was the story of the offense for the uh, for the Steelers though. He had a punt return and then also caught six for 60 and a touchdown. A monster game from him, dude. Um, on the Cardinal side, Murray just looked rattled in this game, man. He he was running around like crazy, threw three picks, got sacked a bunch, but you know, thankfully threw two touchdowns, but only 194 yards. Uh, you know, Kenny Drake 11 for 37. David Johnson actually found the end zone. I saw on the box score. I didn't get to watch this game. Um, yeah, but, he yeah, caught he, a pass. Yeah, he caught a pass. You know, for the end zone. So. I, I think at this point nobody was starting him because he's been not involved at all. Uh, but, you know, he, he really didn't do much except for catch that touchdown. So uh, you, you basically got like six and a half points from him because of that. Um, you know, Christian Kirk, eight for 85. The The question is just like, you know, when when Connor and Juju come back, you know, what's this pit offense going to look like? I mean, Samuels and Snell have stepped up and, and played pretty well. Uh, James Washington's been pretty good. Dante Johnson's been, you know, flashed here and there. Um, are, are we thinking this is going to be like just they're just going to take a step up with with them coming back, or is you know Doc Hodges going to kind of hold them back? No, I, I think whoever is that quarterback is definitely going to you know hold them back. I'm sure that you know they're probably going to rely on on Connors and running the ball quite a bit, and you know they're going to rely on that defense. So. Even when you know Connor and Juju come back, I don't think that this offense is just going to all of a sudden explode. I think it's just going to be a little bit easier for that quarterback to manage. Um, I mean, they, they you know they will definitely have the weapons, but I just think that you know the way that they plan on playing the game is just you know let the defense do its thing and you know run the ball and throw as you have to, and you know that, that they're playing to win and they're going to do that with defense. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you there. You know, it's there was always a lot of questions like each week, you know, after Big Ben went out and they were relying on Mason Rudolph, like, do I start Juju this week? Do you start Juju this week? Like right. I don't know. I don't really know the answer to you guys. Like it, it even when he comes back, like he'll probably be ranked at like an RB you know, wide receiver two, three range. <sighs> He's not an elite receiver. Right now, with the quarterback situation, unfortunately, none of these guys are. Wow. You know, he's he's gonna be you know very up and down. You know, he could easily have a game where you know he does get eight for a buck fifty and, and two touchdowns, but then he could follow it up with you know a couple of games where he gets three balls for you know twenty five yards. Yeah, he's pulling a Marvin it, Jones. It's just, <laughs> yeah, but Basically. the problem is that if you did draft you do and you do have him. I'm sure you drafted him as either your first or second receiver, so probably you your pretty first. Pretty much are stuck playing with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it's a it's a tough it's a tough situation when when your early guys bust like that. I mean, you know, finally cut ties with you know not cut ties. I have not cut him, but you know, like David Johnson, he's just sitting on my bench. Like I do not play him, but you know, Juju's going to be out there, so you've got to use him. Uh, right. And Duck Hodges isn't terrible. This is not going to be high volume, like you said. So. All right, man. That's it for the show. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Hope your week 14 went well, and hope to have you back next week for the fantasy football semifinals. See ya.